Way, way up in the northernmost part of Minnesota, there's a tiny slice of land called the Angle. And due to a centuries-old mistake when the border was drawn, the only way to get there without a passport is to travel 38 miles across a massive frozen lake. And I want to be the first person to do it on an experimental vehicle. Last year, my buddy Eric tried this challenge with a set of sawwheel bikes, but after losing both of their vehicles and crossing barely two miles, they were ultimately forced to turn back. But for me to actually be first, I've got to be fast, because I found out that Eric's coming back. This video is brought to you by NordVPN. The first thing I needed to do is find out if this jet is even powerful enough to push me on a sled. Holy what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to mount the motor onto this guy. And if not have me go on it, we're gonna put, you know, like 150 pounds of sand on there. Step one, putty knife and a hammer. Gotta get this switch off. Oh no, are you kidding me? We used flathead and... Okay, sometimes you regret your decisions later, all right? So I ripped the turbine off the wagon, mashed the two together. That looks so sick. It, like the color scheme even matches. Oh man, I love it. And took the rig outside for a real world test. All right, we're booting it up. Okay. We gotta do that again! The good news is the jet has plenty of power. The bad news, I'm not even sure where to start. Okay, that is epic! This thing was a hot mess. The jet was unprotected, the sled barely steered, and the fuel lines were spliced so badly that the jet fuel leaked everywhere. I mean, this was an actual fire hazard. If we wanted to make it to the angle, the sled would need some major upgrades. Well, I'm gonna introduce to you the sled. It's a little small. Um. <sighs> I think we need to build an extension onto this so that we can actually attach the jet. Actually seems to be a pretty sturdy platform. This is, this is promising. Okay, so I'm just gonna be honest with you, the existing hardware is super freaking jank. To eliminate the leaky fuel system, it needed a total overhaul. So the task force suggested a two and a half gallon race fuel tank, which would be enough to run at full power for 10 to 11 minutes. I mean, it's a little bit jank, but it could be way worse. I picked up a set of skis from Play It Against Sports and mounted them to the bottom of the wagon. Sled is fully complete. It's ready for a dry run. We're gonna do a dry run tomorrow. Well, I guess it's a wet run because it'll have fuel in it. But the back end is extremely compact. It's just like barely like enough wiggle room to like make everything work. The plan is effectively for me to get on like this. Oh, you know what? It's actually not that bad. But then if I do this, the air should flow over my back and straight into the jet engine. Um, and these are like actual skis, so they flex off the ground a little bit to give it a little bit of shock absorption. With the sled fully assembled, it was time for a test, but by this point, it was getting pretty late in February. Since Eric was coming up in March, I only had a week if I wanted to be first. So if the sled failed here, I was basically screwed. I think we're good. Ready? Transmitter on, receiver on. Everything sounds right. Don't do me like this. <sighs> you're fine, you're fine. You're just a little cold. Stop it, get some help. I was so sure that the battery was charged, but at this point we were losing sunlight and I had no time to think. So I booked it to my local hobby shop, brought a brand new battery and tried again. Okay, we should be armed and ready. I'm gonna try booting it up now. We know for a fact the battery is fully charged. So if you have an issue now, no clue what it could be. That sounds promising. Yeah, it's jet powered. Booting up the jet, everything looked good. But of course, we ran into a new problem. No? Oh! Sorry guys, um, we, we don't allow any type of off-road vehicles or anything like that in our parks and uh, as fun as this looks, this, this is included, so. Okay. So After explaining the situation, the ranger said he'd do me a solid just to let me make sure it works, but we had to promise not to film it. So this is the audio from what we got. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yes! Isn't that insane? That's so sick! Okay, so I'm a little bit sad that we couldn't actually get real proper footage there. We were able to test it, we made sure it worked, and I know what needs to be adjusted and tweaked now. We need to change the battery. The skis in the back were just sliding all over the place, so I am thinking I may have to camber the skis a little bit, but this is really promising. So we crated it up, dropped it off at UPS, and booked two nonstop tickets. And while I'm boarding my plane, it feels like a pretty good time to thank today's sponsor, NordVPN, for making it possible. Back in the day, if you wanted to watch different shows on Netflix, your only choice was to book a plane ticket to a different country so you could watch the shows that aren't available in the US. 
With NordVPN, you can simply change your virtual location with just one click to over 60 different countries, so you can watch any movies you want without having to go through TSA. And thanks to Nordlinks, your connection is going to be super fast, making sure you don't have to deal with any annoying buffering. If you're anything like me, you'll also find yourself on some of the sketchier parts of the internet from time to time, which is why it's good that NordVPN is more than just a VPN. Inside the app, you'll also find threat protection, which blocks all those creepy trackers, malicious ads, and viruses from invading your PC. It's included totally for free as part of your subscription to NordVPN. NordVPN is a fantastic service, and you can get 73% off a two-year plan plus a full month free by going to nordvpn.com slash lewiswise, or by hitting the link in the video description. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring, now back to the video. Without my tools, I knew modding the sled would be difficult, which is why it's good that I stayed with Adri, a blacksmith and esteemed member of the WISE task force. Okay, so we're here in Adri's garage, we're working on putting the final touches on this wagon. To be honest, we literally haven't tested this thing since the one, like, 20-foot attempt we got in front of that one security guard. Yeah, we literally don't know if this thing really works yet. I wanna see how this feels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that feels way more substantial. In addition to buying a bunch of fuel tanks and other supplies for the attempt at the angle, I built plywood wings for my legs to rest on, and for comfort, I covered them in thick, durable foam. We've got these uh, nice knee saver pads mounted onto here. This should make it easier to ride for a longer distance. The next thing we need to do is, since we got rid of all that wood and all that other crap in the back, now we have to mount the tank in a new way. And the plan is to mount it through some pieces of aluminum, because aluminum is not lightweight, it's pretty durable. Actively burning daylight and with no time to lose, we took the sled to the nearby park and booted it up for another test. Yeah, it looks like we have ignition this time. That's right. That's what we're f***ing talking about, baby. The sled was finally ready to go, so with only one day to spare, it was time to head up to the angle. The plan was pretty simple. The sled could only go about six to eight miles on a single tank of gas, and the goal was to go all 38, which meant we'd need a snowmobile hauling an additional 15 gallons, refueling at checkpoints along the way. But as we progressed on our six hour trek to get there, we found we had a problem. Okay, so we're officially here, we're up here, we've checked in. We still don't have a support car. We still don't have a snowmobile. Nobody rents snowmobiles. However, we found one that we can buy for $800. So we're buying a f snowmobile. The one we found wasn't perfect, but it ran. And for $700, it was a darn good deal. There she blows! And since we were purchasing it literally the same morning of the attempt, it was going to have to work. We just pulled up. <laughs> what the f***? Yo, it's just white. I have severely underestimated my enemy here. I was worried that I was like making this too easy for myself. It's just a quick jaunt across a big, you know, flat frozen piece of land. How hard could it be? How hard could it be? The good news is, lake's frozen as f The only footage I'd ever seen of the lake until now was Eric's video from last year, and that was what I prepared for. What we saw now was totally different. But it was gonna be a race against the clock because we'd burned so much daylight in the morning that we were running out of time. Straight north is that way. If we drift slightly west, it'll bring us over to this piece of land right here, which is where we're trying to get to. This whole thing, that's the angle. Start trucking. Yeah? We're good. Riding across the lake wasn't easy, but I was starting to get the hang of it. Well, the good news is it works. I'm just gonna try to boot it back up. The skis were working as intended. They were absorbing the bumps in the ground. And as we progressed forward, I was getting more and more comfortable putting this thing up to speed. Take the gas tube, we stick the tube in the tank, adjust this there a little bit. There we go. Here's the uh, fuel rod. Hunter's starting to get deep out here. 
starting to get to the point where uh, slides properly sink in. But that's okay. It's actually working with flying color. We were actually doing pretty well, but the problem was we weren't getting any further from shore. Instead, we'd been riding along a snowmobile track that was close to the edge of the lake. If we actually wanted to make it to the angle, I needed to get offshore. So I took a right turn and started gunning it toward the first pressure ridge. Whoa! We just dove! I'm good! Dude, it's driving so well. It just needs something flat. It's bumpy, man. You think it gets better out there? No. I was totally fine, but the problem is the sled wasn't. The force of the flip had snapped the crossbeam that holds the steering in place, so we weren't going to be able to drive this thing unless we got it fixed. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're actually going to make it. Yeah, there's no way we're going to make this. And with Eric arriving the next day, I needed to do it ASAP. Especially since, by this point, I'd seen his vehicles, and let's just say I was a little skeptical. Adrian and I replaced the busted front bracket with 3 16 inch steel and modified the front ski to tip up to stop it from diving down into the snow. But before heading back up north, to make sure everything was in working order, I took it to a nearby lake for a speed test. I want to give it a speed test, like a top speed test. Yeah, this road might be dreamy. Transmitter on. You are fine. No ignition. Warm up, baby. I know it's cold. You got this. There we go. See what's crazy is like, look at this, like right here, hard as shit, right? I can jump on this and not go in. I take one step this direction, there's no way to predict that. You literally can't see it looking across the snow. Like, it's like playing fucking Russian roulette with where your landing spots are. This sled needs suspension. It needs proper steering. And it's not gonna get either of those. With a 42 mile an hour run under my belt, I was ready to leave Eric in dust. With no time to spare, I loaded up the car with extra fuel and drove another six full hours back up to the angle. A little bit late, because I woke up at like 5.30 instead of five, but... Turn right. God, I want to die inside. As it turned out, Eric had found an ice road, but the issue was it wouldn't last forever. An immense amount of snow this winter had meant that the locals had given up on maintaining it. So the first few miles were pretty flat, but after that, it was totally uncharted territory. But having seen what I was up against, I was ready to tough it out. So after giving the boys a little head start to keep things fair, it was time for me to take the lead. Transmitter on, battery plugged in. If this battery doesn't work, I have a backup. Here it is. Get ready. After I'd seen what their vehicles could do, I knew this jet would leave these guys in the dust, even including the refuel tanks. 
and as I expected, once we encountered deeper snow, Eric's fleet of vehicles immediately sank. Eric, I gotta level with you for a second. Yeah. This is exactly what I thought would happen. You called this early. I called this early. I think the snow caught everybody off guard. But I was still confident. I was prepared. If anyone was gonna make it across this lake, it was gonna be me. And with road markers to guide my way, I felt confident that I could make it. So despite beating Eric, ultimately the lake beat me. Neither of our vehicles had actually made it, which meant the record was still on the table. I'll be back for you, Lake! Shout out to my patrons, especially Adam Ruth, and I will see you all next time. Peace.